Hello, Assalamualaikum. Welcome back to another video by Sir Shazwan. Yes, welcome back, welcome back. So today we'll be looking at report writing, which is a major part of your final assessment. It's not major part, it is your final assessment. Uh -huh. So today we'll be looking at how to write a report, the proposal report, which is cons which consists of several things that you need to know, need to find out how to do it so that you'll be able to properly write a report, which is which is uh, useful to help you in the future. Because when you are in the workplace, you always have to write reports about something. Okay, so without further ado, let's go. Right, what is a re what is report writing? So. Is it terms you write report? Huh. No, actually, a written report is perhaps the most common way of presenting information at the workplace. When you want to uh, inform people about something, you write a report. So usually, a written report provides detailed account of an investigation of a workplace issue and also information that will help management in decision making. So sometimes, uh, uh, usually, the report contains like the issues that happens and then what kind of find uh, the uh, findings that they find maybe because of that issue what happens uh, so that what that helps the management so that they can decide what to do about the problem so there are various kinds of reports such as pro proposals progress report accident reports audit report and etc so, reports can be either written or presented orally. Sometimes we do both, okay? Right, the format of a report. So, reports can be divided into two types of categories. Informational report or analytical report. So, you must remember that there are obligatory and optional items. It means that there are some that you really need, you must have in a report, and some that you can omit or omit not right so those the most important thing that you need to have in a report is the introduction the findings the conclusions and the recommendations those four things are the major items that you have to have in a report so then you have the optional items such as the title page table of contents acknowledgements Executive summary or just a summary, bibliography and appendices. But a good report consists of both of them. So you know what I want. Right, so proposal report. So this is the main thing that you need to do. So proposals are written documents used when offering a solution to problems. When you want to make a request, you know, when you want to make an offer, or when you want to ask someone, you want to urge someone to take action. Usually, uh, proposals are divided into two general groups, which are solicited proposals and unsolicited proposals. Okay. When you want something done, you need to create a proposal. Like example, when you are in the university, you want to do programs or anything, you need to come up with a proposal. So, you write a proposal, you want to... Uh, find a solution to something, you want to request something, you want to offer something, then you write a proposal. Okay? Right. Let's look at the two different types of pro uh, proposals. Solicited proposals are a response to demands made by people, firms or companies in a time to uh, fulfill a specific requirement. This is common practice that such entities announce or distribute a RFP. Request for proposal or CFP call for proposal stating that it is what they are looking for, and you can read the rest. Okay, because if I read this, then we'll be here until next year. Okay, what about the unsolicited proposal? It is the opposite of solicited proposal, and it is written without a request from an outside party. This type of proposal is used more often than not to offer a service, a solution, or a problem. Or when trying to sell something. So solicited, remember, you want them to uh, ask for specific things that you want them to fulfill. But unsolicited, 
it's just like you want to provide something you want to ask uh, you want to give something to to a company or to a uh, someone else or to, you want to try to sell something those are what you use for so solicitor is more like a more formal one rather than unsolicited okay right important items of an unsolicited proposal are you need to uh, have the title of the project the introduction the problem statement the objectives the scope the findings significance budgeting 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 and conclusion so those things are very important because the title you want to inform about what the project is about introduction you you want to give the background so people will know what you want to look at problem statement the issues that you want to tackle the objectives is how do you want to tackle the issues using what methods and everything scope is the the focus of your project or uh what do you want to achieve findings is what uh, you have found the project is uh before the project after the project that is the finding significance the importance of the uh project budgeting is the money the funding that you use the funds that you have and then the conclusion is the summary of the project how you end the proposal okay so proposal can also be written in two formats informal and formal proposals uh pro formal proposals are generally a response to big projects but informals are shorter two to six pages enough and is used as a response to smaller issues problems or project so maybe formal you want to work with other companies or something and you use formal but maybe maybe informal maybe you want to just discuss with uh, fellows your colleagues or something you want to do a program maybe you can use informal depends on the situation it is right proposal report the introduction so i i briefly said about this earlier but uh let let us go to one by one introduction you it always contains the background what is or what was the problem okay. you want to tell the problem that you want to inform people that there is a problem what is the problem about okay so then you have the terms of reference who wrote the report who asked for the report and the scope of the report okay then you have the methods or procedures what methods was used to collect the data maybe you interview the friends maybe you <coughs> use a survey so those are the methods or procedures this is an example you can read it on your own uh, because if i read it then like i said you'll be in here until 2025 okay so this is an example of the introduction okay then we have the issue of absenteeism. Then they have the uh, background of about the problem. Then the methods. Okay. Now we have the findings, the main issue. Okay, the main issue. The main thing that you need to explain as well as the others. Okay. Findings are based on facts and not opinions. Do not include not essentials and avoid assumptions. Be clear and precise. Avoid big statements. Findings may be written in point form or paragraph form, depending on how you write. Make sure uh, you can write either in point form or paragraph form. But when you are writing it, make sure it's clear. It's not vague, and it is. It explains what you have found. For the example, so look at the example here. So, like the like the example shows that they use interviews, like the methods. Their interviews, they found out that it was for well, the majority of them did not train, train uh, attend training due to timing of training, which was after office hours or weekend. So that is the findings that they found out that uh, the ones the ones who are absent, they did not attend training. Which affected their family time. Okay. Then it was reported that that is how you report a finding. 
which is based based on facts, based on what you uh find found out. Okay, and the findings also show that uh, those are facts, statistics that you found using the methods. So, uh, look at the red uh wordings. So those are the ones that uh so those are some of the expressions that you can use when you want to report findings. Okay. Then conclusion. <laughs> well, they jump so fast from introduction findings to conclusion finish. Nah. Okay, for the conclusion, so the conclusion is also based on the findings. So, but when you write the conclusion, you are evaluating on the facts presented. You are evaluating the findings. So the conclusion, you give an idea about the possible cause of the problem under investigation. Sometimes, conclusion is where you mention the recommendations. When you, you want to finish off, you can recommend something as well in the uh, conclusion. You don't have the recommendation session, you combine it with the conclusion. It becomes one uh, paragraph. Okay. So you sum up everything that you have found. You provide evaluations on the facts that you have given. You have found. Then you maybe explain a bit about the cause. Maybe it talks about what the cause is, what the cause of the problem. So that is how you write a conclusion. So this is an example of a conclusion. Conclusion can be drawn. The employees are dissatisfied with the training conducted after office hours or weekend. So you see, back to the findings that I mentioned, uh, that we looked at earlier. So you mentioned about training during of, uh, after office hours. So that is the conclusion that they found that the employees are not willing to go training after train, uh, after hours, after office hours. So, and then, so you're just summarizing what you have found. And you speculate or you evaluate based on that. Okay? Example here. Right. This is the recommendations. After findings, we talk about the recommendations. So, uh, recommendations are suggestions for the course of action to be taken to solve a problem or issue. And it are given based on the conclusion. Based on what you have found, you give recommendation based on that. Okay? Because you want to solve the issue. You want to avoid more absenteeism based on the example absenteeism. So how will you do, how will you do that? So for this example, so as I mentioned this, the company should conduct training during working hours to avoid absenteeism during working hours because you have problems after office hours. If you do it during, then maybe it won't be much problem. And then there are some other examples based on what they have uh, found. Okay. But look at the red words. Those are recommendation words. Expressions that you can use, words that you can use to show recommendations. Like I mentioned earlier in the other videos, there are some, some words that show that it is a recommendation or it is a suggestion. So when you give recommendation, you use those words that show recommendation right so the language focus here of course usually the language use is formal we don't use words like i or we it's not like you are uh, telling a story or you're giving a speech so you just use the third person so instead of writing when we carry out the staff survey the example okay don't do it like that when we carry out the staff survey we found out that the most common complaint was about the working environment so we use the passive voice okay? don't use like we carry out so try to make to try to take out the i the we and everything so they can be a uh, don't they no problem i and we is no it's not suitable use to be used in a form of writing so is how we do it in a passive voice how do we fix that percentage when the staff survey was carried out, it was found that the most complaint was about working environment. See? No, I know me there. So it sounds more formal than the ones above. But you remember that 
this always is broken. This rule is always broken. They sometimes use I and or we in a report. So which is uh bad. It's not really good. Okay. Right, uh not not to try avoid using I or we in formal writing. Okay. The language in the report should be logical and factual based on logic based on facts. So bad example, team leaders weren't very good. They were useless. See, the the way that you write that uh, like that shows opinion base. Shows that you are just giving an opinion, you're not doing like uh, something to show that it's really they are really you uh was worthless, useless, not good. Yeah. How do you make it better? The, teams le uh, the team leaders will observe to criticize and correct the employees when, when they made mistakes, but never to praise the employees when they did well. So you see, the, the change, you change it a bit, you show that there is something that's a process that you do to make it like, uh, like something real, slightly factual. That is how to write a good one. Okay? But we'll observe to criticize and correct their employees. Means that the, that's the method that they observe some, someone. They observe the team leaders. That shows that it is logical. It is something factual. It happens. But the first one doesn't show that it really happens. It means that just they're just stating something or just be giving opinion. Okay, a sample report. <laughs> the question. Uh, the king is actually, uh, you can read it on your own. This is a sample. You can read it how it is, uh, they write the question for this. Uh, uh, basically, this is like example question. So, how do you write an introduction? It's a sample. The title there, the introduction, you tell about the, the topic, what is the pro, what is the, what is the report about. So, <clears throat> the process, the methods and everything. The background of the topic, those are, are in the introduction. Then talk about the background, what is the company, what is the process there. <clears throat> so the background of the issue as well. Okay. Then we have the findings here. So this is based on what they have uh, observed or maybe they have to survey, they have interviewed. So uh, let's see, uh, uh, that's it. The staff survey was carried out. They have found out something based on their service. surveys. So this is the findings. Okay, continuation of the findings. The conclusions. The main issue that was found. So they summarize what they found into a conclusion. Which is the main issues there. Okay, this is how you can do it. Then they have the recommendation. They have they, they gave several steps to how to address the issues which is very helpful for the uh, management team okay. so this is your uh, like the outline of your uh, assessment okay so you have a group discussion this is how you present you have to present the, uh, the meeting first okay like the like the uh, like a meeting or like a discussion group discussion about a particular topic which is can be used for your fourth one which is the proposal uh, proposal writing so this one and the fourth assessment are related because you are based on the same topic okay the group discussion is where you discuss on the findings and everything okay so you need to submit a portfolio of materials and drafts used for the Discussions, we have 30% there, around 6 to 8 minutes on week 11 and week 12. So the instructions, you are allowed to bring notes but not articles. Because you need to use at least 5 articles for the, uh, for the portfolio as well as the discussion. Because you want to find proofs and evidence. So you are allowed to bring notes but not the articles. Don't bring like big notes like big the small sticky notes is anything something 
Okay, you are responsible to introduce an aspect of this discussion. Maybe you first will be talking about the problem. Maybe you talk about the background. Maybe you talk about the uh, the issue. Those uh, you there are a certain aspect that you have to introduce first. One talks about this, then you uh, discuss on that. Then one talk about this, uh, expand on that. Okay. So everyone, everybody should express their views based on the aspects covered by individual members. Make it like a meet, uh, authentic meeting where you have certain things that you want, you have to discuss. A want to talk about this. B want to talk about this. C wants to talk about this. Then you discuss about that, right? So you're going to suggest solution to the identified problems. You are the one who will discuss the solution, right? Then we will be looking at the portfolio, which is based on the discussion. So for the portfolio, we select a workplace issue such as sexual harassment, gender discrimination, salary dispute, etc. La 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 la. We have discussed about it before. You select a company and look for relevant articles or websites on the issue and look at how the company manages the problem. Select five articles to support the issue. Examine them. Identify my Identify my points, prepare online, mix draft, yada, 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 for the group discussion. And those, that is for the group discussion. You propose solution for the uh, chosen issue. You compile the articles used and draft, and a draft for the oral presentation for the portfolio. Okay. These are the references for this. And that's it. So this is more towards uh, proposal writing, how you write a proposal, the different parts of a proposal and the different types of a proposal, the, the crucial, the obligatory and the optional aspects of proposals, as well as the language focus in the proposal. So I hope that this helps because you it might seem daunting, but actually it's quite easy when you have found the correct way. Okay. So samples will be given to you. Don't worry. You can use the samples as a guide for you. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, so this is Sir Shazwan signing off. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.